I have two, uh, two interesting applications for the uh, um, double angle and uh, sum of angles identities. And they both involve the cosine of three times theta. And the first one is an ancient problem uh, called the trisection of the angle. So um, probably everybody watching this video, taking this as a course, has done um, a, a geometry course. I don't know if they teach it much anymore, but one of the classic um, things they did in ancient Greece was to examine what can you construct with a compass and an unmarked straight edge. So compass, that's one of these things where you stick it in there and draw circles. Uh, everybody's seen compasses, I think. And unmarked straight edge, think of it as a ruler without anything marked on it. Just a straight board that you could draw straight lines with. What can you do with that? Well, in ancient times, that, uh, that fascinated the Greeks. Um, you could uh, give them an angle by using compass and straight edge techniques. You could bisect the angle, divide it into two equal angles. You could take a segment and bisect it. You could draw a perpendicular to a segment. Uh, you could uh, duplicate triangles. You could uh, draw parallelograms. You could draw parallel lines. Uh, very interesting stuff. Um, all kinds of nice things you can do with the compass and straight edge. You can also solve the quadratic equation in many cases. I don't uh, when there are real number of answers. I think there's a way to solve a quadratic equation. Now, in order to do that, you have to define a length, maybe a length of one. So how does that work? Well, you would spread out the compass. So this means one. You could duplicate one and get two and three and four. But uh, there was a way to uh, solve even quadratic equations geometrically, I believe. Now, I'm not sure I'm right that you could solve every one with real answers. But uh, anyway, um, I know you could do some. So the, um, there were three problems they couldn't do. They couldn't figure out how to do. The most famous was called the trisection of the angle. So given an angle of... Um, arbitrary angle, you draw me an angle, can I, by using compass and unmarked straight edge, can I find a way to divide that up in three equal angles? And they have to be exact. Can't be approximate, they have to be exact. Can that be done? Uh, they couldn't figure out how to do it. Now, and, and this went on for 2,000 years. It wasn't until maybe the 1700s, I'm not sure when, in the past couple hundred years, um, mathematicians finally figured out that that's impossible. You can't uh, trisect an angle with those tools. And I'm going to show you why that can't be done. <laughs> okay, I can show you why that can't be done. Now, I hope you find that very interesting. Um, the other two uh, uh, problems of ancient times, one was called squaring the circle. So if you had a circle with a given radius, is it possible by using compass and straight edge to draw a square that has the same area as a circle? Can't be done. You know, this area is pi times radius squared, and it means basically coming up with a way to draw uh, some fraction of pi in some exact form. Um, that can't be done. And the third problem was called doubling the cube. So if you were given a length of a side of a cube, Given this length, is it possible to find the length of the side of a cube that would have double the volume? All right, that's equivalent to finding a way to construct the cube root of three. Okay. Now we can construct square roots with compass and straight edge, but we can't construct cube roots. And, and that's going to be part of why we can't trisect an angle. Okay. All right, so bear with me. I think this is, this is worth your attention. Uh, it's a fascinating problem, and we get a lot of trigonometry involved with it. So uh, it'll, it'll hopefully make sense. Now, uh, one little footnote is if you are allowed to make one mark on your unmarked straight edge, you're able to put a mark there somewhere, then it is possible to trisect the angle. I, I don't understand how. I never studied that, but it, it is actually possible to do that. Okay. So, in order to put this to rest, 
I first need to figure out what's the cosine of 3 theta? Cosine of 3 theta. All right. And I'll, I'll let you, as we get through this, you'll see why I'm interested in the cosine of 3 theta. All right. Well, the cosine of 3 theta is the cosine of 2 theta plus theta. And the way our identity goes, it, uh, if I use the, um, the uh, cosine of alpha plus beta is cosine alpha cosine beta plus minus sine alpha sine beta. This would be cosine of 2 theta, uh, cosine, cosine, yeah, cosine of theta minus sine 2 theta sine theta. All right, so I plugged it into cosine alpha plus beta. I use that format. And we have an identity for cosine of 2 theta. That uh, it's a double angle, so let's, let's, I'll use the cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta times cosine theta. And then this identity is 2 cosine theta sine theta for sine of 2 theta, that double angle identity, and then times another sine theta. Well, all right, let's multiply this through. I've got cosine of the third theta minus cosine theta sine squared theta minus 2 cosine theta sine squared theta, 2 cosine theta sine squared theta. Got that? And lo and behold, these are the same terms, uh, like terms rather. So I can write this as cosine cube theta minus uh, 3 cosine theta sine squared theta. Now, I'll, uh, I'll give you a little inside stuff here. All right. Have you ever heard of Pascal's triangle? Maybe. Some of you probably have heard of it. Pascal's triangle starts off this way. I think I hear some thunder outside. We're having a pretty good storm out there. So, uh, you don't hear thunder much in the wintertime, but there it is. So here's some thunder. I happen to grow up in the Tampa Bay area. I grew up in Clearwater, Florida. And uh, that area has more electrical storms than anywhere else in the world. So, yeah, I grew up with uh, thunderstorms about every day for much of my life. Not every day, but in the summer it's about every day. Anyway, back to work here. Pascal's triangle um, has ones down the sides, and every number inside is the sum of the two numbers above it. So 3 plus 3 is 6, 4 plus 6 is 10, 1 plus 4 is 5. And it's used, if you've never seen it, it's used in uh, probability, calculating probabilities. It's used in uh, uh, anything that involves raising a binomial, you know, two-term polynomial to an integer power. You can apply Pascal's triangle. So anyway, here is a cosine cubed and there's minus 3. You have to change the sign. Minus 3 cosine of the first sine of the second power. So cosine cubed sine to 0. Cosine squared cosine cosine times sine squared and then sine cubed. So you pick off every other term and you have to change the signs. So, uh, why that's true uh, boy, how would that work? I think you, I gotta think about that, why that's true. I, I just didn't know it. It might have something to do with, uh, probably have something to do with the Euler's formula. Anyway, well, I'm still not done with this. I'm not, I'm not totally happy with my formulation of cosine 3 theta because I want to write this only in terms of cosines. And, and you'll see why, so uh, bear with me. This is cosine cubed theta minus 3 cosine theta. What can I replace sine squared with? That's right. 1 minus cosine squared. So now I'm going to get positive 3 cosine cubed added to this one to make it 4 cosine cubed theta and then minus this term, minus 3 cosine theta. So there we go. We have the cosine of 3 theta. Now believe it or not, I've got, uh, I got another application besides Trisect the angles for this. So 
we're able to figure out the cosine of 36 degrees by doing this in, in exact form. It's a very messy problem, but I'm going to do it on videos because I think it's a, a great problem to, to see. All right, so uh, yeah, I wanted you to follow all this. Now, what am I going to do with this? Well, <clears throat> here's how the classic proof starts to show that you could not trisect an angle. So if you're okay, I'm going to uh, move this up here so I have room to work. Later in this whole video series, I'm going to uh, show you a theorem I came up with and proved after enormous effort on my part. But I actually had to uh, use Pascal's triangle. I ended up going out to like cosine of 17 theta with it. Um, yeah, that's a long story, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll shorten it for these videos later on down the road. Uh, very interesting theorem I, I came up with and I'd like to share with you. All right, cosine uh, 3 theta equals 4 cosine cube theta minus 3 cosine theta. Alright, so here's the idea. Um, suppose that you give me a 60 degree angle. Now we can construct a 60 degree angle with compass and straight edge. It comes from equilateral triangle and that an equilateral triangle would actually be quite easy to produce with a compass and straight edge. And so if this is 60 degrees, trisecting it would produce 20 degree angles. So if I could, could construct a 23, 20 degree angle, then I can trisect a 60 degree triangle. And, and that wouldn't prove anything other than that we could trisect 60 degree angle. But what if I could show it's impossible to draw a 20 degree angle? If it's impossible to construct a 20 degree angle, then it's impossible to trisect this angle 60 degrees. Which means you can't trisect every angle. Most likely you can't trisect hardly any of them. Yeah, you could trisect a 90 degree angle. You could do that. But because um, you can draw 30 degree angles. Uh, so basically, trisecting a 20 degree angle, if I knew the cosine of 20 degrees, how, to, how that is, and if I was able to construct that number by using straight edge and compass, if I could construct this cosine of 20 degrees, I can construct one, I can construct a triangle with 20 degree angles, which means I could could trisect that. That makes sense? All right, so here's the idea. The cosine of 60 degrees is 3 times 20. So this would be 4 times the cosine of 20 degrees cubed minus 3 times the cosine of 20 degrees. All right. But what's the cosine of 60? One half, isn't it? That's equal to one half. So I'm going to take this equation, multiply it by two to get rid of the fraction, and then bring this term over. So I end up with eight cosine cubed 20 degrees minus six cosine 20 degrees minus one equals to zero. All right, it looks like a big algebra equation because it's really the same as eight x cubed minus 6x minus 1 equal to 0, where x is the cosine of 20 degrees. So i got to be able to solve this algebra equation. And um, I have solved it. I have solved it. So uh, I'll write the answer up. Now, uh, I'm not going to solve it here because it's a pretty advanced algebra problem for the level we're at here in these courses. But um, some years ago, I wrote a book on college algebra, and I decided to solve a cubic equation. Now, interesting history here. In the early 1500s, several Italians figured out how to solve equations like this, third degree polynomials, we call them, or cubic equations. They learned how to solve them in the 1500s. How they did it was beyond me because they didn't have our symbols, they didn't have symbols for plus, add, subtract, multiply, divide, and equal. And so, uh, so a lot of what they did was, I don't know, writing in words or something, but they managed to solve them. They also solved fourth degree polynomials. All right. One of the guys that solved these was a fellow named Cardano. Cardano was a, 
jack of all trades. He was also a doctor. He's the one who identified the anthrax virus. And uh, as a mechanical engineer, he invented the U-joint. U-joints are in the linkages between the front and rear of your car. A lot of cars and trucks have them. And they allow axles to uh, bend and flex without braking. And uh, in Britain, U-joints are called cardans in honor of Cardano. All right. So there is a way to solve it. And uh, if you want to see it, I could. Uh, I suppose you could email me and I'll... I'll send you that excerpt out of my book if you want to see how it's done. It takes a few pages. But here's the answer. Here's the answer. Okay. X, which is a cosine of 20 degrees, is equal to one half. Okay, bracket. Cube root. One plus the um, I times the square root of three over two plus cube root of 2 over 1 plus i times the square root of 3. All right, that's it. And um, so when they were solving problems like this in the 1500s, they often encountered a very complicated answer where they had the square root of a negative. They would have written square root of negative 3 here. And they were baffled. No one had really paid any attention to what we now call complex numbers. And they knew that this answer is a real number. This answer is a real number, but there's no algebraic way to get rid of the imaginary numbers. <laughs> there's no way to algebraically simplify it where there's no uh, imaginary numbers. It's very curious. Very curious to them. And so they just kind of left it baffled. And it took two more centuries, the 1700s, before people started thinking in terms of complex numbers and were able to to deal with this. And incidentally, we can compute this using trigonometry. <laughs> okay, because trigonometry is really good with uh, complex numbers. But topic for another chapter, okay? We'll do those. So here I go, I got this big mess. And with a compass and straight edge, I can't construct an imaginary number, impossible. And you also can't construct cube roots. Why can't you construct a cube root? Well, with a straight edge, you can draw a line. A line is a first degree polynomial. Y equals mx plus b. You can construct circles. A circle is a second degree polynomial. x squared plus y squared equals 2 radius squared. And you cannot combine these geometrically through intersecting and duplicating, if I uh, intersected a line with here, with a circle, to find the points of intersection involves uh, the quadratic formula. If I take two circles and intersect them, um, I get, uh, I think we have to still use the quadratic formula. You cannot get to a third degree polynomial with any combinations of lines and circles. It's simply impossible. So I'm going to leave it at that because that's uh, kind of an intuitive reason why we can't use compass and straight edge. We could take on a more formal attack on this argument I just made. But uh, basically you cannot construct cube roots, you can't construct imaginary numbers, you cannot construct the root of this equation which is the cosine of 20 degrees without being able to draw the cosine of 20 degrees with straight edge and compass, then it's impossible to trisect a 60 degree angle. And one imagine that's probably impossible to trisect virtually every given angle. So there we go. Very nice um, application, I think, of the cosine of 3 theta. Now I'm going to use that uh, for another problem. So um, bear with me here.